Thank you so much for joining me for day 17 in our Read Through Proverbs Challenge. Today, I'm reading from the NIV version, and we are reading chapter 119, verses 129 to 136. The psalmist starts with, Your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. Right there, he tells us exactly why he obeys God's words, God's statutes, his law. It's because they're wonderful. I know that the day that I finally came to the realization that God was wonderful, that he was trustworthy, that his word was wonderful, it was full of wonder, full of life. The day that I finally had that aha moment that I could trust God in his word and that it was for me and not against me, it was for my good, not my harm, was the day I finally gave my life to him. And I said, you know what, God, I realized that you love me and you've got my back and I can trust you. And that was the beginning of my journey with God. Now, it hasn't been an easy journey and I have not done it perfectly for sure. And that is why I'm so grateful to have a Savior who loves me and who continues to teach me. But one thing I know for sure is that God doesn't fail us in his word and he is wonderful. And I pray today that that is something that you have realized. And because you know that he's wonderful and his word is wonderful and he will not fail you, that you'll obey him, that you will read in his word, that you'll seek his face, you'll seek and desire his will for your life and then walk in it. And when you do that, I promise you, you've, you'll never be disappointed. I have never been disappointed when I've stepped out and followed after God with all of my heart. He says in verse 130, he says, the unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Do you need light today? Do you need an answer? Do you need direction? As I read things, my mind starts to show me pictures. So I'm reading it and it says, the unfolding of your words gives light. So the unfolding of God's word here, Maybe even the unfolding of things you've heard him whisper to your heart. As you unfold it, that means you unpack it. You look deeply at it and then you start to bring it open. You start to dive deeper and you begin to open it and expose it. It's an unfolding. That takes action on your part. And as you unfold the Word of God, as you study it, as you read it, as you do Bible studies, as you do word studies, as you get together with people and unpack and unfold the word of God, light comes. And his word is a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We studied that a couple of days ago. God's word will not fail us. He will direct, if we acknowledge him, we unpack his word, he will show us the way to go. It is light. And it says it gives understanding to the simple. It doesn't say it gives understanding to the most brilliant person in the world. It says the simple, the simple-minded, the one the world would call the fool. <laughs> the, I love that the Bible says that God uses the abase, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. When you unpack that verse, when you unfold that verse, it teaches us that God uses the ones the world say are ignorant, the ones the world say don't belong, the ones the world say are failures, people who have actually failed. Those are the ones that God chooses. And he chooses to reveal himself to those people and he chooses to reveal his word to those people and to give them great spiritual understanding and discernment. And that's what he says. He goes, when you unpack and unfold your word, God, it gives me light. It lights up my darkness. It shows me the way to go. It gives understanding to the simple, to the one that doesn't know which direction. And maybe even the simple person who the world would shun and turn against. God's looking not for perfect people who know it all. He's looking for the, the simple one that would come to him and say, God, teach me. And that's why God loves the psalmist, and the psalmist loves God. He's got a teachable heart, not a perfect heart, but a teachable one. He says, I open my mouth and pant. I've got three dogs. You can probably hear them in the background, but they come here. I mean, they're so excited. 
They're hungry. They're hot for it. They just pant. When they're thirsty, when I take them for a walk, they pant more and more because they become more thirsty. And the first thing they do is run into that bowl over there and slop water all over my floor because they're thirsty. They're panting for it. And he says, I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. The dogs run to the bowl of water well, to, to satisfy and to refresh them. We have the living water of God's word that if we long for it, if we pant for it, if we run to it, if we unpack it, we will have light. We will have discernment. We will have wisdom. We will have refreshing because times of refreshing come from the Lord. We will have all that we need. Turn to me. This is verse 132. Turn to me. This is what he's saying to God. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give me, Lord, what I don't deserve, as you always do to those who love your name. Another version says, as is always your custom. Down here in my, my commentary notes, it says, as is your manner, as you always do. This is the character of God. He gives mercy to his people. He, and he's saying, have mercy on me, God. Help me, help me. He says, direct my footsteps. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back. He says, have mercy on me as you always do to those who love your name. So God is faithful to have that mercy to people who love his name, who seek after him, who long after him, who pant after him. Those, he loves them and he will never leave them or forsake them. Direct my footsteps according to your word. So let your word direct my footsteps. Let no sin rule over me. You know, whatever we let rule over us is our master. Whether that's fear, whether that's anxiety, whether that's anger, whether it's unforgiveness, maybe it's an addiction. Um, I believe addictions, and I, I'm pretty sure this is accurate, addictions are rooted in something else. There's a hurt. There's an anger, there's a resentment, there's a rejection, there's something in there that then the ad addiction is trying to feed, is trying to appease that brokenness that's in somebody's life. We eat to make us feel better. People are um, shooting up heroin and different things to ha get that high, to escape from this world. And um, those are the things that rule over us. He says, let no sin rule over us. We need to come to a place. I need to come to a place. I'm never preaching at you. I'm preaching at myself. We need to come to a place where the only thing that we allow to rule over us is God and his spirit, not our flesh, not our desires, not people pleasing, not perfectionism, not being a performer, I'm preaching to myself right now. The only thing that needs to rule us, whatever rules us, enslaves us. Whatever rules us, commands us to do this and that. God needs to be the only thing that rules us. If you study like in the Galatians and different New Testament books, you'll see that struggle between um, sin ruling you, your flesh ruling you, and the Spirit of God ruling you. And it's something that only with God's help can we win that battle. And that's why the psalmist here is saying, God, I need you to direct my footsteps. I need you to lead me down the path that is good. And God, I need you to let no sin rule over me. I need your help, God. Redeem me from the oppression of man. We've talked a lot about the oppression he's under, that I may obey your precepts. Make your, again, he's asking for help. Make your face shine upon your servant. Make your face, your glorious face, and your glory, God, your love, shine upon me because I am your servant. And we talked about that yesterday. Teach me your degrees. So again, he's saying, help me, teach me, open my eyes, help me. Don't let any sin rule over him. That's how we live life. Doesn't mean we live it perfectly, but we always live with an awareness that we need God. We need him to get through life, to make decisions. So often what happens is, at least I was guilty of this, I didn't understand how to bring God into my life. I thought you went to church, 
You said your prayers at night. I would memorize scripture because I went to a Christian school and went to church and you got candy if you won the, the Bible verse drills. You got A's if you memorized your verse. But I didn't understand how to apply those things to my life. I thought when it said keep God first in your life, it meant that you wake up in the morning and you pray a prayer. That was the first thing I did. And then you go through life. And then you say your prayers at the end of the day. You kind of cap them with the prayer at the morning and the prayer at the end. What I didn't realize, it's not God then your day. And then to end your day, it's God in, woven in your day. And that's what the psalmist does. Every emotion, every word, every situation, he's saying, God, do you see what's going on? I need your wisdom here. I need your help. I'm being oppressed. I need you to show up. I need you to help me. I'm having a trouble with this sin over here. Can you help me? Help me to cling to your word, God. And so he's kind of all over. Like sometimes I feel like I'm, whoo, you know, some days are good days, some days are a little bit harder, but it's a fight. But as, but if we fight it on our own, we'll not win. But if like the psalmist, we fight in the word, we fight from our position of victory, we might have moments where we say, you know what, God, I'm afraid. But then we start renewing our mind and we start reminding ourselves who God is and who we are in him. And we're able to rise up and fight. The psalmist brings God into every aspect of his life. And as we do that, we will be victorious people. It says, um, it's time for you to act. Your law is being broken. Oh, wait a minute. That's yesterday's. Ah, I lost my place. Okay, it is time for God to act. We'll just skip that. But it goes, uh, redeem me from the impression that I may obey. Make your face shine upon me. Teach me your decrees. And then this is where I wanted to end. Sorry about that. Streams of tears flow from my eyes for your law is not obeyed. This person, this psalmist is broken hearted over the condition of the world. And unless we become brokenhearted of the condition of the world, we'll never be moved. It's our compassion, it's our righteous anger that moves us. Not being just angry at everything. I'm saying there is a place for righteous anger, for compassion, for em empathy. And this psalmist here, he says streams, streams of tears. He's weeping, flow from my eyes because your laws are not being obeyed. I can't say that I, I sit and weep <laughs> over the condition of the world. I get irritated by it. I'm like, people, what are you doing? I come on videos and I share what I've learned in the word, but I pray that God would give me the brokenness for his world. He did do that when I was in prison. When I went to visit a friend, my heart became overwhelmed to the point of tears for the men and men that I saw sitting there in those jumpsuits. And I realized the brokenness of families as I watched them with their children and their wives and their girlfriends and their parents. And my heart became broken to the point of the brokenness of this world. That is one time that I have had it. And it moved me to action, to start Victorious Living Ministries behind prison bars, behind prison walls, to start mentorship programs. That compassion and that brokenness over the condition of those people moved me to action. And it's moving the psalmist to action. It moved Jesus to action. He saw the condition of the people. It said he had compassion. He wept over the condition of people's hearts. And so I ask you today, are you broken over the things of God? I ask myself that question. And until we get that brokenness, that, that aha moment, one that we can trust God, that we, and that he is on the throne, we understand um, how good and wonderful his word is, and we get broken about it, then things start to change. And we rise up in God's strength and his power for his justice and his cause, and the world begins to change. So I just wanna encourage you today to seek after the God's heart, to seek after his word, to ask him what it is he'd have you to do in this broken world, because God has something for you to do too. 
and maybe it's partner with our ministry. Maybe it's partnering with another ministry. But I believe God doesn't just call us to give money. He calls us to action, to get our hands dirty and to get in there. And until you get in there and you experience it yourself and you truly see the brokenness of the world, you, you will continue to stay in a comfort zone. And so I, I think God's calling us out of our comfort zone today and inviting us to join him in his work and to see truly how good he is. All right, I look forward to studying the next section with you tomorrow or whenever the next session airs if it's fallen on the weekend. God bless you and have a wonderful day and may his grace and his face shine upon you too. Bye-bye.